contact me at timscomputerfix.net to find out how you can ship me your laptop for repair. Hey guys, Tim here again, timscomputerfix.net. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace a faulty keyboard on a Toshiba Satellite Radius, model number P55W-B5220. Customer brought the computer in complaining that the G actually types up the number six and a few other strange errors. So we're gonna replace this keyboard. Let's get started. Okay, as you can see here, guys, I have a notepad open here. And uh, just hit the letter G, and this it's pulling up sixes instead of G. So what happens if I hit the number six? Oh, <laughs> well, same thing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and replace this keyboard, and uh, that should rectify this problem. Let's get started. Okay, we flipped the laptop over here, so we're going to start off by removing all the screws on the bottom of the laptop. Okay, I have removed all the screws on the bottom of this laptop. And look at that. We have found another screw. Two screws, folks. Two screws. That's why we don't force things. So we'll take off these two screws here. this off. Be very careful lifting this off as there is a ribbon cable attached to the bottom that goes to this power button here. So let's just go like this. Lift it up like so. Let's go ahead and just disconnect this ribbon cable. We'll flip up the tab and pull the power button out. Power button's here. The very first thing that we want to do in this situation is, of course, disconnect the battery. The battery connector is here. Actually, what I'm going to do, starting off here, is I am going to disconnect the battery. It's a little tricky trying to clear this uh, plug from hitting the battery so we're going to disconnect I think I'm going to try to see if we can loosen this battery up take off these one two three four screws all right there is a slight bit of glue holding this down right in this area here so we'll just be careful not to bend it just pop it off like that. There's glue right here on this ribbon cable. That's funny how they do that, huh? Let's pull this tape off here. There's some tape that's holding down the... We're going to disconnect this keyboard right here, ribbon cable. Let's pull it back away. There we go. And it's stuck to... Some of that glue stuck to that ribbon cable, so be careful when... Moving your battery around there. So I mean, now I got some room here. We can pull this battery cable out. There we go. Battery cable is out. So you can see here that the keyboard is already, well, at least the keyboard bracket or plate is visible here after taking the battery out. So this is what we have to gain access to. The whole motherboard is covering the whole, the whole entire back plate of the keyboard. So. Obviously, we know what that means. We got to remove the entire motherboard just to get to where we need to get. Interesting. All right, we'll just remove the hard drive here. There's a ribbon cable that holds the hard drive into place. We'll flip that up. Yep. All right. 
set the hard drive aside okay there's another small ribbon cable down here that connects to the board we'll flip that up and we will pull that out of the board there's another ribbon cable here that goes to the touchpad flip that up and we'll pull that out okay so we've gone through here we've removed this ribbon cable and pulled the tape from off of the speaker here and we have disconnected the we have disconnected the antenna wires from the Wi-Fi card there are these three groups of cables right here that need to be unplugged I've disconnected two of them but I need to be very careful about disconnecting this one here as there's not a lot of room to work with the fragile looking cable there so I'll wait till the board is actually loose a bit of a bear just get a quick look here how we got our cables all routed here Thing's going to kind of go under this And it's missing off of here, so whatever reason that is, everything goes under that. Around this way. It looks like we need to remove the fan to deroute some of these cables here. Definitely looks like that, so let's give that a try. Remove the fan. So we'll disconnect the video cable here and we'll disconnect this other ribbon cable here. Okay, that pops off like so. Disconnect the, the fan connector like so. Well, we can at least remove the cables from their traces that they go under here. And there's a couple of more. Yep. No problem there. Here's the motherboard. Well, no. This is the little daughter board. connector here. I'm not really sure how that's connected. This connector like so. And that removes that gently gently. And then this is the power jack connector here. We carefully remove that. That's been removed. And these we do have a couple of speakers that looks like may have to be removed here. We're going to go ahead and remove the motherboard screws. All right, it looks like there are screws showing you which screws. There are arrows showing you which screws to remove. Here's one. Another one here. And there's another one here. And there's another one here in this corner. What I am seeing here, guys, is there is a kind of a clutch cover right here that needs to be removed. So there's one screw here. So here's the other. So I removed the two screws to this clutch cover here, which makes it a little bit more flexible. But um, I think what's keeping me or holding me down here is this um, this uh, heat sink assembly here. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this heat sink from here. So kind of do it crossways like you're supposed to. We'll remove 
this heat sink there. And now hopefully we have a little bit more of some playing room here. Okay, so there's that other cable that I couldn't get. It's out now. Lift it up that little trace there. Here we go. Okay, and motherboard is out. Okay, now we can start to see where our keyboard lies here. Go ahead and remove this speaker. Alright, we got this speaker loose here on this side. And I have access to underneath there, so I may not have to completely remove this. We'll hold him tight right there. Let's go ahead and remove this speaker on this side. Take this speaker off. It's going to go here. All right, so this pretty much just kind of lifts off, and we'll just keep everything just kind of sitting here for a moment. We'll take up this little daughter board on this side. some tape on this side so now that exposes all the screws that we have to remove all right we're just going to start removing these screws off. Alright, we got a little bit of tape under here. Oh, I think my keyboard's right here. Here's our keyboard. And we'll just go ahead and lift him up and out like so. Okay, we got our new keyboard here. Here's our old one. There's our new one. So now we will just carefully lay our keyboard back into place. And this ribbon cable like this way. Then we'll put our plate back on. Everything goes in reverse as usual. Line everything up. Make sure we pull out these ribbons so we don't get them caught underneath. Now we can start putting these screws in here. We'll go ahead and just tighten them down here. Screw these two screws down for this one speaker. We have the daughter card here. Get that back into place like so. Let me go ahead and get our 
speaker flipped back over. Get that back in there. Get our speaker put back into place here. It goes like so. Okay, let's go ahead and put our motherboard back into place. This ought to be fun. I want to go ahead and put this tape back here. They had this tape here for a reason, I'm sure. And then we'll just slide our motherboard back into place. The bad thing about this is you can't test the keyboard until the computer's almost completely reassembled. Got to be careful here too. We got to pull back these ribbon cables here. All right, at this point, I think we can go ahead and secure our motherboard down. Got one here. One in this corner. Here. And we've got one here also. Okay, and if you've noticed, I've already cleaned off the heats, the, uh, the CPU, GPU, and I have also cleaned off the heat sink, having it ready for thermal paste. Okay, we'll go ahead and set our Processor, heat sink here. I think what we can do how kind of how I did it when I took it off is I can go ahead and just sit this sit this heat sink down on here like so. Let's just go ahead and So that's now into place. Uh, we can actually plug the fan back in. Plug it in like that. There we go. All right, I'm not going to secure the fan down yet as I got to get these, um, these cables routed like they were up underneath, up underneath here. We've got this cable here routed correctly. Back here, we'll snap this on here. I believe this is the video cable. Snap, there goes that. The daughter board cable here. That's here. All right, this is the power jack cable. All right. Fan screws. Put those two back in. All right. Let's go ahead and tackle these little guys small cables here plugged back in properly if you can see what I'm doing here it's a little tricky here's that one plugged in not much to see there and there's that one plugged in wonderful all right those three are plugged in let's get our little antenna wires there it is That's done. We have this little, little guy over here. We're getting closer. All of our cables up top here are all plugged in properly. We have the clutch cover screws that go in their spots. All right, we'll just pull this copper tape back over. 
this small ribbon cable down here. And then we have this small ribbon cable here. And now we have the all important keyboard ribbon cable. The culprit of our problems. Lock it down tight. And then we have the backlight ribbon cable. And that locks down nicely. The hard drive needs to go in. Throw in a little hard drive ribbon cable here. That's done there. The battery. There we go. Battery is plugged in well. Now it's plugged in. There we go. And we'll just slide this guy up a little bit. We will get our screws put in for the battery. And then we'll be ready to test. Ribbon slot there is for, don't forget about this, is the actual power button. So we got to put this casing back on here. All right, I think that's got that. And we'll gently lay her down. Don't quite snap her in, so now what we're going to do is test. We'll open her up. We got her plugged in. Have to give her some power. Okay, so you can see here we've powered on the laptop. Um, it took the password, which was a really good sign. The keyboard's doing okay, but now we're going to have to test off here. Okay, so now you see that I have a notepad open. I'm going to be pressing the letter G here. And now, as you can see, the G is being produced on the screen. And I'm doing this one-handed, so bear with me, guys. Dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And that is exactly, that'll test that, test every key. Then we'll go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Very nice. Number lock is on. We'll check all those. Very nice. Yep, enter. Yep, I think we're in good shape, folks. This keyboard's working good. Backlight's working. So that's it. This, that's how you replace a keyboard in this model laptop. I hope that helps somebody out. More computer repair videos coming your way. Tim's Computer is where you can find me. And until next time, everyone, see you soon.